Hello and welcome to Goodison Park. I'm Sarah Halpin. This is Everton Live. I'm delighted to be joined by Ian Snowden, who's joining me ahead of this big game today, Everton versus Spurs. It's been a bit of a tough time, hasn't it, lately, Snods? Yeah, it has. The performances have not been great and uh, it is a massive game. Uh, we didn't want a new manager in charge of Tottenham uh, for this afternoon's game. It does give you a little boost as a player when a new manager comes in, but they're the same players. They're the same players that have struggled themselves uh, this season. All right, they've got off to a great start on them, but then the, the form went downhill. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big, big game for us this afternoon. It really is, and that I'm sure the players are aware of that. It's massive, isn't it? Well, let's have a quick look at is, what is to come for you this afternoon on Everton Live. So we will have the highlights versus Spurs for the opening day of last season. We know how that one went. That was a fantastic result. We'd be hoping for the same today. We'll have team news here for you at one o'clock. I've just spoken to Gareth Farrelly, and that was a fantastic chat about, of course, his goal that kept us in the league all those years ago. Tom Davis talks to us about the Veterans Hub. We've got a Spurs scout report to give us a better look at today's opponents. Goal of the month contenders. Highlights from the women's game against Leicester midweek. We'll have a pre-match player interview for you. And as ever, live commentary will be available for you on EvertonFC.com. But first, back to today's game. And of course, Spurs, you just mentioned their snods. A new manager. Do you think that that bounce will, uh, will be a big benefit for them today? Yeah, I do. Um, especially with the with the presence of the man, uh, Conte, he's won everything in football, he's a, he's a big presence in himself. They've got some very, very useful players, Tottenham, we know that, uh, none other than uh, Son and Kane, who are, who are all right, Kane struggled this season for goals, but it might be just the lift that he needs as well. He shouldn't need a lift, being England captain, being Spurs captain, but he seemed to be a little bit down in his performances, so uh, this might just give him... Uh, the boost that he wants. Hopefully it won't. Yeah, let's uh, hope not. Because he, he scores lots of goals against us. And uh, to be fair, they have got some good players. But as I say, it's about us today and how we start the game and how we play the the uh, the full 90 minutes. Let's not let's not go into a shell if we concede a goal. Let's let's see some brave characters out there today. Let's hopefully that the fans will get behind us. Give Give the fans, people have said, oh, the atmosphere at Goodison's not been great. It hasn't been great because we've not got the fans off the seats. That's what they want to see. They want to see a good tackle. They want to see a great ball getting delivered into the box. They want to see challenges going in there, whether it's defensively or attacking set plays. So uh, the onus is on our players to generate an atmosphere. Hopefully they can do that, but it's not going to be easy. Tottenham are a good side. The, at the minute, they're poor in form, but I think they've got too many good players to struggle throughout the season. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. It's Benitez versus Conte today, but first, let's throw it back to an absolutely different lineup last season where it was Ancelotti and... Who was it in charge of Spurs? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> it was Jose Mourinho. It I certainly that was. For a second there. <laughs> let's, have a, <laughs> let's have a look back to the start of last season. We are ready to go again, but the reality of football without fans, unfortunately, remains. Richarlison's chasing this, and he'll get there too. Richarlison's done wonderfully well. Clear chance, round the keeper. Oh, he should have given it to Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and Everton would surely be in front. Picked up by Decore, advancing forward for Everton, brings in... James Rodriguez on his left foot, goes for goal and narrowly wide. Good ball two, what a goal! What a header that is, Dominic Calvert-Lewin! Brilliantly headed home! Tottenham nil, Everton won. And that ball into the path of Richarlison. Richarlison faced by Sissoko. Richarlison curls one just wide. Wasn't too far away from the Brazilian. Now, here 
comes Sigurdsson to help out. His ball in. Might break here for Kukure. And then the shot comes in from Seamus Coleman. Rattled goalwards. It was on target. Maurice was right behind it. The captain caught it well. It has finished. Tottenham Hotspur nil. Everton won. having a little giggle there. I can't believe I forgot who's... Man, that says a lot about how many managers there's been. I didn't even help you out as well, I was I? looking at you like, snods, come on, come know, through for me. But no, we got there in the end. But of course, that just highlights, doesn't it, you know, how much football can change in 12 months. You've had An Ancelotti and Marina in the dugout season forward and it's Benitez and Conte. It, it says a lot about modern day football, doesn't it? And well, how much things can change in a year. We only need to look at Norwich yesterday. Yeah. Daniel Farker, he, um, he, he gets a win, does his pest press conference and then finds out he's he's no longer the manager after exactly. he's done the press conference so the first win nothing in football surprises you Neil Warnock said that uh, in his interview because he he's got finished at uh, Middlesbrough and he said nothing in football should surprise you and it certainly doesn't but uh, now we've uh, with two new managers since that game me and Darren were down there doing the commentary and we was excellent that day we played really really well and what a goal from Dominic Calvert-Lewin who I've just been talking to now uh, uh, I was just asking him how long he'd be, and uh, yeah, we're certainly missing Dominic. He's a he's a, he's a threat. Um, I would tell him he, he's got he's great opportunity for him once he does get fit uh, within England as well. Um, he, 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 we miss him considerably with his his power, his pace, his ability in the air, and uh, yeah, he's sorely missed. But he's not going he's not going to be playing today so we've got we've got to get on with without we've got good players but it's about how you manage the game today and go about and and as I say we, we've got to get a result today we really have it's so crucial isn't it and you just highlighted there Dominic Calvert-Lewin we miss him tremendously top scorer last season I think what he offers us as a physical presence aerially he's always going to contribute and and help the team Defensively as well, actually, I think he, he plays a massive part in defending set pieces, which we've seen that we've struggled with lately. The injuries, we, we have had a torrid time, haven't we? Though? Yeah, we have, and to some very, very important players, uh, the spine of the team. We, we got on about um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin defensively at set plays, but when you think you've got Yerry Mina, six foot four, six foot five, missing, you've got Decore, six foot three, that's, that's a massive loss when you're defending set plays. But we have conceded too many, too many from set plays, corner kicks, free kicks, etc. And they've got to be sorted out. But you are missing three big lads there that defensively are very, very sound. So uh, it's all about organisation and, and certain players taking responsibility. And that's what we've got to see this afternoon. We've got to see the players take, uh, take responsibility, roll the sleeves up and say, come on, we're Everton Football Club here. Um, we don't want to get beat again here at Goodison Park, and I'm and I'm sure that uh, we can pull some kind of result out today. Well, it is absolutely crucial. We do, obviously. You know, we played Wolverhampton Wanderers away earlier in the week, disappointing two-one defeat. Mm. First half we know was far from good enough. Second half we did pick up. Wobi managed to pull one back. Fabian Delph came on, who looked very impressive. Mm. Actually, it has to be said. So do you think players like that that returning from, from injury, Fabian Dalf and the like, will be will be important to help us through this tricky fixture? Well, well I hope so. Um, Fabian's been here a long time and he's, he's three seasons nearly and uh, he, he's been injured hell of a lot. Um, he's, he, he were injured a lot at Man City. He's not had the best of luck with, with injuries, but he, he came on against Wolves and perhaps it was a little bit too late because the first half performance weren't acceptable. I've got, I've got to be honest, I, I, I wasn't there, uh, I was watching it at home and uh, in all fairness, if it weren't for Jordan Pickford, it could have been four to five at half time uh, and I was really, really disappointed but the lads come out second half, uh, showed a bit more spirit, showed a bit more fight but I want that from the start, I don't want it when we're 2-0 down, uh, it's a long way back from 2-0 down but it doesn't need me, a former player, to tell the boys that the first half weren't acceptable. They'll know themselves that that was not acceptable. The manager have told me no, uh, no manner that that isn't acceptable. So uh, hopefully, first whistle today, the boys will uh, will be tuned in and they'll go straight for it.
let's hope so. We've got to be at it today, haven't we? And, you know, you mentioned it's a long way down from 2-0 down. And earlier in the season, I think we'd seen that Everton had the ability to overturn these, these you know, deficits. We were behind against Southampton opening day of the season. Second half, we came out fantastic, turned them over 1-3-1. We did the same to Burnley, albeit we did have a fully fit squad there mm. of players. But there is obviously that in inside this, this team that we can turn things around. Do you think it's just been lacking a bit of confidence, a mixture of confidence, lack of players that have sort of affected us? I don't know, Sarah, because you look at it and up to the to the Watford game, we were in the league, we were in a reasonable position. Yeah. And um, I, I thought we folded drastically against Watford. Everybody knows that. I'm, I'm not going to keep going on about that because... That weren't acceptable. Uh, the it last was a 50, crazy ten minutes. Yeah, the last last fifteen minutes or so was wasn't Everton Football Club wasn't Everton. We don't want to see that again. Uh, but um, and then he's thinking you'll get a response at Wolves. They didn't first half. Second half they did. But I'm sure Rafa's had them on the training pitch all this week and emphasised what an important game this is. Uh, and as I've said, Tottenham are yeah they're a useful side, but they're not. They're not brimming with confidence at the minute. They've got this new manager in that will give him a boost. But, hey, we're at home. We're at Goodison Park. We've got 40,000 Evertonians in here, so what a boost that is. Yeah. And if you give if you give our supporters something to uh, to get excited about, I don't care. They could have Mourinho, they could have Conte, they could have anybody they want in that dugout. If the lads perform and this crowd gets behind them, we will win the game. Yeah, that's it. The, 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 the power of the fans here at Goodison Park, you know, you talk about a 12th man in football, 12th mm. player, that is what Evertonians can offer. But I think it's we need to kickstart the game, get the fans up and hopefully show a bit of attacking, you know, sense in the start and, and get us up off our seats. And so we, this can be the best place in the world to play football. When you're playing well, the team's winning because there's no other place like it. It's, it's fantastic. But let me tell you, and a lot of players will tell you, when you're not playing well or you're not try not trying, you, you don't go out to not try at a game of football, or you're not playing well and you start hiding a little bit from the ball, these fans are not silly. They, they know what's required to play for Everton Football Club. And uh, it's a lot of passion, a lot of endeavour. You give that, they'll be well satisfied. But if you just kind of 80% in your game and you think, oh, I don't fancy it today, they pick up on that. It can be the hardest place in the world to play your football when you're not doing well, but it can be the best place in the world when you are playing well. So, perform today and it'll be the best place in the world. That's it, exactly. <laughs> we'll both do our part, hopefully today, on the pitch and in the stands as well. Now, we have got team news coming up for you in just less than two minutes. We've spoken a little bit about some of the players today that we think will be key. Are there any of the, obviously, opponents, players that you've got the obvious ones, and we said Harry Kane, Son, Lucas Moura. These are all players that can hurt Everton, aren't they? I think the two, the two you've mentioned, Kane. All right, he's not playing. He's not playing brilliant. It, it has been highlighted a lot on TV that he's not the player that he were last season or whatever. But Harry Kane's Harry Kane, and I think he's a terrific player. Scores at any time. Uh, Son has just got bags of ability. He's quick. For me, them two are standouts. They're absolutely standouts. If we can keep them down to a minimum today, um, I, b I believe the rest of them. I look at the rest of the squad and I think, yeah, they're all right. They're all right. Yeah. Um, but them two, for me, are really, really, really good players. Yes. Keep them quiet. And then we... we... I'm painting a picture here as though we're going to get beat to Tottenham here. I I'm not painting that picture at all because... I'm confident we, we can get a result. If the attitude's right, yeah. they're wanting to work, they're wanting to run, they're wanting to close Tottenham down, not allow them to play, then I obviously think we will win the game. But then things have got to be implemented right from the first whistle. They certainly have, you know, it's, it's a crucial, crucial game for Everton season, this. You know, three, three losses on the bounce. We need to get a win here at Goodison Park today. And we'll have the team for you in just a few seconds to see who's going to be leading the line for the Toffees today and hopefully getting us back to winning ways. Anthony Gordon as well, just quickly on him, mm. because I know the team's about to drop. Would you like to see him in yeah, the would. today? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I think he's uh, he's been unlucky a couple of occasions where he's not started or he's got brought off. Um, he's exciting when he picks the ball up. The fans are, are getting right behind him. So, yeah, for me, he's got to play. 
brilliant. Well, we're just about to find out on that note. So here is your Everton team for today. Jordan Pickford starts in goal. We've got Michael Keane, Alan in there as well. Richarlison, Fabian Delphi, of course, we mentioned, does get the nod to start for Everton today. Damari Gray, Lucas Dean returns from injury, which is a big boost, no doubt. Andros Townsend, Ben Godfrey, Seamus Coleman, and there he is, Anthony Gordon, the young lad we were just talking about for the Blues today. Let's have a look at, look at the bench then. Asmir Begovic, John Joe Kenny, Mason Holgate, Alex Awobi, Cheng Tosin also returns from injury, so it's good to have a bit more strength and depth there. Jean-Philippe Gabarmin, Tom Davis, Jared Brandway, Brandway, sorry, and Salomon Rondon as well. So that is your Everton team for today, and let's have a look at the visitors' top. Hugo Reese in goal as expected. Sergio Regulon, Christian Romero, Pierre Emile Hoiberg. We've got Son, obviously the danger man who we've highlighted, and Harry Kane in there as well. Emerson Royale, Eric Dyer, Lucas Mora, Oliver Skip, and Ben Davis too. And the bench for Tottenham. We've got Gallini, Doherty, Sanchez, Winks, La Celso, Deli Ali, Bergwin, Tangana and Ndombele as well. So those are the teams. How are you feeling firstly, obviously, to start with the home side, Everton? I don't think there'll be any complaints from any Everton supporter over that team. I think it's, uh, it's one that the majority of the fans will want to see. All right, you'll get the odd one thinking, well, should I put Tom Davies in, etc., or um, should Mason Allgate be playing? I'm sure there's, there is a few questions, but for me, that lineup, the 11 that has been selected, I think that's the strongest lineup he could have put out today. And uh, I right, we were right about Anthony Gordon. Um, he had to play for me. He had to start. Um, he's getting he's getting great support from the from the terraces, so uh, his confidence will be. High. Even though the the lads have, have lost the last few games, his confidence personally will be good. So he'll be he'll be desperate to play. He'll be desperate to start the game, and he certainly is. So let's uh, let's get the ball out to him, and let's uh, let's see him do what he's good at. Let's see him go with players. But then you look at the Tottenham team, and I mentioned them to Son and Kane, and they have a look at the rest of them, and I'm thinking. Nothing stands out to me. I'm sure Tottenham fans will look at our team, the way we're playing, and go, well, nothing, Richarlison, yeah, perhaps, nothing really stands out to me. But Tottenham certainly doesn't stand out to me, Sarah, so uh, I think there's an opportunity if we if we go right from the whistle, and I keep repeating myself, right from the whistle, yeah. whistle I don't want to be 20 minutes in, you're finding yourselves 1-0 down, or 20 minutes in, it's so slow and there's nothing happened. Get out there from the first whistle and... Make it exciting. Yeah. Put a tackle in, do something. Just get us come going. On, get yes. us going. That's what I'm all about. I, I, I'm passionate in the commentary, me. I'm like, Love it. get in, get in there. Get, do. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm like everybody else, just because I played. Just because I played, I, I am a fan, and that's what I want to see yeah. from my team. I want to see energy, tackles, and a passion to, uh, to win this game. Let's hope so. Mm. I feel inspired after no. listening to that snod, so hopefully the players are watching Everton live, and I'm sure they've got <laughs> other things to do right now. But no, hopefully it'll be a win today. But now, let's go to Tom Davis and the veteran Tom. Involved in the in the program um, and being involved in ever in the community, how important do you think it is having like-minded people around you when you come down to the program? Dave, obviously, it's um, you know since I've come to I feel like I've struggled to fit in anyway. I was coming down to them sessions and meeting people and, and like when I actually probably dived into it and got involved, you know, that I seen what well, yeah, this is for me and some of the people and made some friends for life now with us. You talk to people who've done it before or doing it now, or have done it now. Uh, so you're picking up what they've been through and they're picking up what you've been through. You know, one of one of the massive reasons we use football as a sort of engagement tool is for this reason, what we're talking about here, you know, that sort of camaraderie, the, the banter, the, 
you know, the cohesion, the sort of togetherness and everything like that. It's exactly the same, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think I think for people it can even just be that sense of belonging to a community or people that think the same as you. Because it can be it can be hard, like he's about saying, and when you feel like you're on your own and you can't speak to people that can't relate to the situation you've been through. That's when it can be tough because you do feel like maybe you're the odd one out. Or, yeah, you feel like you're the, the odd one in the bunch, whereas if you can join Evan in the community, as we're talking about, and meet people that are the same as you and you feel like you're, you're worthy there and you have that belonging and it's like a it's like a group of people together that can support each other and and talk about things that they're going through that other people can't relate to in a in an everyday environment and these two guys here have got that they've, they've got that belonging there and not many people well hardly hardly any people can relate to the things that you two have been through which which was so we're so thankful for for people like you and um yeah I think it's it's a great opportunity that using football because I'm the same I love coming in every day and speaking to the lads and having a joke and there's lads from all around as soon as you go on a football pitch you have that instant connection to people and I think it's really great that the, this program is running and um I'm, I'm glad that the two of you are involved or three of three of you are involved that can. I can help each other and continue to help other people that are looking to join and become a part of something, yeah. Brilliant conversation there with Tom Davis and some of the veterans. It's you know important, especially this time of year. It's all we always highlight, you know, the veterans mm. and what people have done for this country. But it's so important, isn't it, that we we remember these people all the yeah, time. Yeah, and, and I don't think it should be just uh, a remembrance Sunday. It should be all year round for what uh, what them people did for our country. You're right. And uh, as a matter of fact, me and Graham Stewart are uh, joining Darren Griffiths at the uh, Veterans Hub on, on Wednesday evening to uh, go and meet a lot of the, uh, the veterans as well. But, uh, yeah, what they sacrificed for this country and uh, for the world uh, was absolutely incredible. So, And I just think one of the most... Best, the best thing on remember is the last post when they play that. I talk about uh, Z cards. When you come out to Z cards, bow once a year that for me the last post is so touching so true it's such a t it really is it's moving mm. it gets me every time I think it affects me. everybody in mm. the stadium um, and we'll be having that today yeah. as well but you know I hope you enjoy that when you go later in the week uh, down to the yes no, we, we will I, I love uh, I love mixing uh, with them all and uh, the reminiscing well. and, and asking them what actually were happening in the uh, in the war and even even the uh, the younger generation the, uh, the the lads that are in the army and mm -hmm. navy etc the stories that they've got to tell as well so it's not all about telling us our story i'd rather listen to their story than to than me tell them about what i did at football to be quite honest well they are incredibly inspiring people we all owe them so much um, but back to an interview i did earlier i spoke to an incredibly important man in everton's history in Gareth Farrelly. Here's what he had to say ahead of this one. Delighted to be joined by Gareth Farrell, who, who scored an absolutely fantastic goal for Everton. Um, a crucial goal all those years ago, 20 years ago, we're looking back now. How does it feel to be back at Goodison Park? It's always great to come back, to be honest with you. 23 years ago now, so like you say, it's uh, slightly strange thinking about where the time goes but obviously exciting to be here to, uh, to see the game today. Now, Gareth, is this the first time you've been back at Goodison since the return of fans? No, I was here for the Watford game. Oh, I shouldn't have asked, slightly should strange. I? No, 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 no. <laughs> but no, it's, it, it's been an incredibly strange time for everybody. The last 18, 20 months has been quite surreal, so it's, uh, it's nice to see some sense of normality with regards to fans being back, but obviously that brings different challenges and different pressures if you like so it will be interesting to see how everybody copes with the game today what's going to be a tough game so we're all apprehensive and looking forward to it so let's hope for a positive performance today 
Well, let's hope it is going to be a positive performance and hopefully stop this bad run of form that we're on at the moment. Do you think the fans can be the difference today? You felt the impact of, of a rocking Goodison Park, as you said, 23 years ago. Do you think the fans can get behind the team and help them to result today? Yeah, I think the fans are massive, but I think there's also another element to that, which is that Everton is, is a tough place to play and it's a tough place to play when things aren't going well. So I think there's a, there's a degree of pressure and the longer poor results, if you like, carry forward, the more challenging it becomes. But I think the fans just want to see people that are committed. I think that's the that's the first part you can... I was out watching schoolboy football with my son playing yesterday. I think it doesn't matter what level you're at. Hard work, desire and intensity goes a long way. And the point with Evertonians is that they, they recognise that and they know what it looks like and that's what they want to see. And if I think if we get a foundation or a starting point from there, hopefully you get the performance and then you also get positive results. So... Let's hope that's the case. Absolutely. Well, a boss Evertonian as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Gareth. No worries. And hopefully you enjoy the game today. Pleasure to see you. Speak to you. Yeah, it was lovely talking to Gareth Farrelly earlier. And, of course, that goal that he scored all those years ago, such an important one in Everton's history. But I'm absolutely to, delighted to be joined by Major Barry Edwards here today ahead of this You're game. Welcome. And you're the chair of Everton Tri Service Toffees. Thank you so much for coming to be with us on this important fixture today. Firstly, how, how happy are you to be here at Goodison Park? Oh, it's really great, yeah. It's great. It's been good getting back after the pandemic had finished because we've missed out quite a lot since then. Um, the results haven't been particularly good over the last couple of games, sadly. Uh, but it's great to be back inside the stadium, yeah. Brilliant. And hopeful for a more positive result today, no doubt, against Spurs. Can't be much worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that we turn up today and, and get a promising result for all these fans that have turned out today. But talk to me a little bit about Tri-Service Toffees. You founded, um, you know, how many years ago and, and what you guys do. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was started in August 2019, obviously just before the pandemic started, by, um, by a guy called Jazz Bal. He's now, on the, he's now the chair of the Everton Fans Forum, so he's, he's sort of moved on to bigger things now, and he handed over to me um, It's about the uh, start of the 2020 season. So we've not really done an awful lot. So the reason we've got a tri-service uh, Toffees team is, you know, most of the people live a transient life. Um, so, you know, they're, they're not based necessarily in the northwest. They're based all over the world and often moving at a sort of minute's notice, so they don't have a... Um, you know, spiritual geographical supporters club to be part of. So, so we look after them. We have people based all over the world, um, from the navy, army, and air force. Uh, and we, you know, we hope to get together a little bit more. But we're sort of fixed by uh, you know, traditional holiday periods when people are off work and are not deployed around the world. Um, but we do keep in touch with them while they're away. And the club are really good in the. You know, send them some goodie bags out, uh, whether you know, based in the Middle East or the States or out at sea. Fantastic, and you know, it's brilliant to see that the club are doing that. But for what you guys sacrifice and everything you do, it's the, it's the very least that we can do. And I love that you guys founded the Tri Service Toffees for that sense of community, you know, that mm. sense of togetherness, as you said. It must be incredibly challenging being deployed and not having necessarily like a, a main base to be. Does that help, you know, like? In terms of keeping your spirits up and stuff like that, having that real sort of community around you. It does, yeah, it does. And it, uh, organisations like the British Forces uh, Broadcasting Service are really good, and they tend to televise the football all over the world where they can, and they've got good relationship with the people who broadcast it in the UK. Um, and, and then, as you say, as I said before, the club send things out to them. We keep in touch, and you know, in the modern era, social media and video calls and all that. One of, of the course. positive things that's come out of the pandemic, I think, we've learnt how to sort of keep in touch using technology rather than in person. But we will get back together, you know, at the club. We'll find a pub. Um, we'll bring the, bring together. And the other thing we're going to try and do is get involved in the um, the Everton community. I know there's a strong veterans network in there. Absolutely. And, uh, and there's a, a football tournament coming up next week, I think. We've got a couple of players playing in that as well. So we do try our best. Hopefully it'll get easier over the next few months. Absolutely. You know, as you said, it's been a really, really challenging couple of years mm. uh, with the pandemic on top of everything else as well. So it'd be fantastic to get everyone, you know, together, we'll, have a game of footy. Yeah. We're just talking to Ian Snowden there, and I believe he'll be, he'll be going along and getting involved as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be fantastic. But on today's game then, Barry, you know, an important fixture. Um, 
How do you see this one going today? I don't know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Tottenham don't get a bit of a bounce from the new manager and you know, get a boost that way. Um, they, they did all right in the second half against Wolves the other night. Improved, didn't they? Yeah, it, they, they got better, but the, you know, the team seems a little bit balanced. We're obviously missing some key players at the moment. So, I don't know, they, they just need to put a bit more effort in, I think. <laughs> <laughs> need to work a bit harder as a team. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. They're there for the take in Tottenham. They're not they're having the best season either. That's it. You know, both in a, a rocky run of form, really. Mm. So, I say perhaps send you down the tunnel to have a word with them before send the game. Send me down, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Yeah. We'll get Barry in there, absolutely. But just on try service toffees as well, if you want to tell everybody how they can get involved if it's something that they're looking to do. Yeah, have a look on, uh, have a look on Twitter. Uh, we've got a pretty active Twitter account on there. Um, and then everything's done through the military uh, email system or the military um, private portal, Defence Gateway. So, you know, get in touch through Twitter. We'll get you in touch with the secretary, Tony, um, and we'll get you booked in. Uh, we're looking for some ideas from people as well on what, whether there's anything more we can do for you guys based all over the place. That's brilliant. Well, Barry, thank you ever so much for everything you do, and thank you for joining us here on Everton Live today. Oh, thanks for having us. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, brilliant. And now a closer look at today's opponents, and here's the scout report on Spurs. Some good memories there against Spurs. Definitely hoping for more of the same today, aren't we, Suds? Yeah, we uh, we need to. I've just been uh, talking to a lot of the uh, guy Mowbray who's doing the game uh, for BBC today, and he's uh, he's hoping that it's a good game. But uh, yeah, we just both agreed it's going to be a tough game, and uh, both sides are not in great form. But it's whoever wants it the most, and hopefully the boys in blue will want it the most this afternoon. Oh, let's hope so. Countdown to kick-off is getting closer. Fans are starting to fill up in the stadium and we're getting that atmosphere, aren't we? It really, really is a massive game for Everton today. But now let's throw it back to October and have a look at the best goals of the bunch.
experience stuff, some great goals in there, great to see goals from all of our teams, and you know the under 18s and under 23, some belters in there as well. Yeah, they were. I've been, I've been watching the 18s the last couple of games, and uh, the 23s. Obviously, we do commentaries on them, so there is there's some good goals. The couple of free kicks, one from Reese uh, Reach Hughes, and then the ladies' game as well. That was a terrific free kick. You'll tell me who Stunning. that is, Sarah. Dan Turner. Dan Turner. Oh, yeah. What a great free kick that was. But uh, for me. I know, I know we went on and got comfortably beat, but I thought Richarlison's impact on the game, when he first came on, we put him on, and within, what, two or three minutes, he'd scored that great diving header. Great ball from Michael Keane, so um, I thought it might have been the goal that led us on to a victory, but obviously the, the cookie crumbled at the end of that game. But, uh, yeah, Richarlison's were a, were a decent goal, but there were many, many good goals there. I think I'd give it to Townsend for celebration of the month there. Yes, that, uh, yeah. What an old when chap, Ronaldo. it was fantastic, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Thankfully, we didn't go on to lose the game, which he joked about after I thought it was great. But it was great to see, of course, some Everton women goals in there as well. And Jean-Luc got off to the perfect start midweek with a win against Leicester. Trying to wriggle through and create something early on here. Early down the line, and it's opened up really nicely here. Deflected shot, and in! Everton lead in just the second minute. Does look easy from the commentary box, but need to try and get a foothold in this game, and that's not going to help. Well intercepted by Dali, who's got it back. Dali has a go. Straight at Lambourne. Nice pass forward from Bjorn, finds Christensen. Likes to get in between those lines of defence and midfield. Everton chasing a second, they'd be deserving of it. Set back for Dali to shoot, blocked. And now back in, and in! Oh, what a goal that is! 2-0 Everton. And of course... Hunting more goals than any good, ruthless top level team, and certainly what they want to become under Jean Luc Vasseur as they chase a spot in the top three for now. They're chasing a third goal. Darley's fruit. Flag stayed down and has blasted it over. That was a good chance, and she knows it, the French international. Given away by George. Broom helps it on. Suddenly, might be a chance for Leicester. Sigsworth brought down, that could be a card for Nathalie Bjorn. We think the angle favours a left footer, and it is going to be the left footed Perfield, and almost goes in, and in on the rebound! Leicester City are back in it! It came back kindly for Ashley Plumtree to put it in. Christensen to take it. And Goldwoods, still there. Christensen's across again. Pretty decent one and headed in. Everton regain their two-goal lead. And they'll hope that will be that. Here come Everton chasing a fourth. Fourth would seem quite harsh on Leicester City, they've nearly got it. stuff there obviously it was disappointing uh, to fall to defeat to Brighton yesterday but a fantastic fall to midweek and very very excited to watch this new era under Jean-Luc Vassour so obviously as I said it was a disappointing result like, but we've got a massive game against Manchester United next Sunday Walton Hall Park your support means the world so make sure you get down to Walton and give our girls the support that they deserve now back to an interview, and I am delighted that I spoke to Jürgen Mainke earlier.
Welcome back. I'm delighted to be joined by Jürgen Meinke, who is the founder of Pool Sports and Entertainment. Now, Jürgen, welcome back to Goodison Park. Firstly, how does it feel to be here today? Unbelievable. I mean, if you walk into this building, you can immediately feel the history, the tradition of a club like Everton Football Club. I mean, it's, it's just incredible. When you go into a country like America where soccer and football is so new, you don't have any of this. We're still building that. So coming here, you can immediately feel it, smell it. It's, it's just incredible, to be honest. I love that, Jürgen. You've really been touched by Everton, haven't you? You feel that history, that passion, that excitement when you step into the stadium. And it's empty at the moment, so it'll be incredible when the fans are here. Absolutely. Uh, but just to tell everybody watching, you know, you've got a, a brilliant role with Everton if you want to talk to us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So Paul Sports and Entertainment is, in effect, uh, the extension of Everton Football Club in the United States. We're trying to expand the brand of the club, expand and in, in, in the, the presence of the club within America as part of the international strategy that it's a key pillar for Everton as they move forward and what does it mean this means about really bringing the mission the vision those values that make our club such a different club around the world correct a club for the people the people's club into an American market that by the way has the same values and traditions if you see the history of the United States of all immigrants coming from different places working uh, really to, to, to make their lives in their the values of the People's Club reflect very nicely. And in addition, we got the history of the club on the field with so many American players that have played and of represented course. these colors in, in a way that are still in touch with them. You have Timmy Howard, oh. you have Joe Max Moore, M McBride, London I mean, Landon Donovan, Donovan yes. who was here for too short of a stint, if I might say, Landon. You should have said a little bit longer, but I that's think not fans for me would to say. I agree with you there, actually. He was very well loved here, Landon. Yeah, um, absolutely. And as you said, you know, you've reeled off the players there. We have got such a rich heritage of American players here in America. And I know... Here in America, here at Everton. <laughs> See, you've taken me all the way to the States already talking to you. But you were obviously in America for the Florida Cup, which yes. Everton went on to win. How was that out there with so many American Evertonians as well? Look, it was an unbelievable experience. Uh, the fact that there's so many supporters groups organized in the United States supporting uh, Everton is incredible. And they don't only have the passion for the game every weekend and watch a pubs around the nation starting sometimes in the East Coast at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes, 4 o'clock in the morning is when time to wake up. They travel, and they travel incredibly well to o Orlando. I mean, we had a great showing out there. Uh, it was a very complicated tournament, and to be honest, one that showed the personality of this club. Remember, we were, we were due to play against another EPL club, Arsenal, as well as Internacional de, Maya, de, de Milan, mm -hmm. and they never showed up. With the pandemic going on, this was a club that was committed to coming to America, got their fans excited, and actually showed up. Again, one of the other things to be proud, regardless of what happens on the field, for me, what I see... Everton Football Club and what it stands for, the people and the traditions, what makes us excited about representing this brand in the United States and feeling to be part of, of what it is to be a Toffee. Well, I can tell you absolutely are a Toffee and you absolutely get what it means to be a Toffee. <laughs> Just listening to you here, I'm, I'm smiling, I'm feeling all passionate and ready to go out there and, <laughs> and watch the game now. But, you know, a, a key area that Everton are looking to target as well is South America. Obviously, again, we've got some fantastic South American players here at the moment and that's a, a place that Everton's brand is really growing. Can you yes. tell us a little bit more about that as well? Absolutely. Look, uh, at the end of the day, when you look at the American market, the U.S. market, it is a ripple-down effect into the entire continent. So the little time that James Rodriguez was with the club, you know, the Colombian fan base showed up, recognized, connected with us. Obviously now, you know, Richarlison, Alain, everybody. I mean, it's not only the players that connect with the club. It's also the distribution. The English Premier League and Everton Football Club can be watched in every single country in South America, all across, uh, you know, that side of the world on a daily on a daily basis. Correct. And every weekend you can actually tune in and watch, you know, us play. So it's unbelievable. It's, it's uh, the penetration of the brand is fantastic and the connection with the club is great. Oh, I love that. And obviously, Everton, you know, growing our international academy and we've got a few affiliates in the States now as yes. well. That's exciting, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Because it's not only about the first team. And what I mean, the first team is not only the men's side or the women's side, but it's also the under-23s in the academies. As, as Everton Football Club, 
you know, the brand gets built from the bottom up as well, not only with the fan groups being organized, but the kids. Mm -hmm. Access to the game in a country like America, it's quite unique and quite different than in Europe and in my home country, Mexico, where you play in the streets and you can actually go out and, and, and play football. In the United States, there's a pay-to-play model that it's so prevalent that it endangers the development of the players. So having our academies out there and, and access to the game and to a way of football that also represents the values of the club is, is quite strong. And as we move forward in our, in our you know, effort to open and continue to work in the United States, we will see more and more academies pop up. That's brilliant. It's so exciting. The future of Everton in the state is so exciting. Jürgen, thank you for the incredible work you're doing with this club. It's brilliant. I'm so excited after talking to you. Thank you for your time, and let's hope we get a win today. Thank you, absolutely. Let's, let's hope for three points. We can actually need them. It's nice, boss. Yeah, it was an absolute Thank pleasure you. speaking to Jürgen earlier. It's hard not to get excited you can't fucking about what they're doing like. with Pulse Entertainment. Well. Yeah. Everton's brand <laughs> in the States. No doubt we'll be looking to head over there next pre-season. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? But focus back to today's game. And here is what Damari Gray had to say ahead of this one. Well, Damari, back at Goodison, is there a, a different sort of buzz before a home game? Uh, always, especially with our fans. You know, I think it's important we we start off good today, get the fans um, get the fans behind us, and you know it's going to be a tough game, but hopefully we can end this uh, you know bad well with three points. It's interesting you say that about starting off well. That's always the intention, isn't it? Yeah. Is it just that extra bit more important because of recent results? Um, I think you know every team goes through bad patches throughout the season. Uh, We've analysed everything. It's the Premier League, it's uh, the hardest league and every game we, we play is going to be difficult. Today is going to be that, but you know we're more than capable of uh, you know, performing well, uh, correcting our faults you know, from the previous games and making it right. And I'm sure you look at all your upcoming opponents and their strengths and weaknesses. Has that changed a little bit, a little bit of last minute prep because of the changes at Tottenham? Um, it's one of those things, I think, uh, you know, these things happen in football, you know, Conte's a well-known, experienced manager. We know uh, what he'll bring to Spurs, uh, and beforehand Spurs are always, you know, going to be a challenge. But it don't make no difference to, to our approach um, and our belief in, in what we have, and you know, uh, we'll be we'll be good today, I think. Damari Gray there speaking ahead of this game versus Spurs. Now, obviously, he's made a massive impact this season, hasn't he, Damari Gray? He hasn't scored for a couple of games now. He'll be itching to get back on that score sheet today, won't he, no doubt? His last two games have not been his best two games, and he'll accept that as well, but I cannot speak highly enough of him. Since his arrival to the club, I think he's been outstanding. I think he's been a breath of fresh air. I think he, he excites the fans. He's got a great turn of pace, he's got ability to go by players. So uh, I have no doubt Damari Gray, hopefully it's going to be today, get back on the score sheet or put a performance in. Because, as I said, the, lad, the lad's been outstanding since his arrival and uh, I've really enjoyed watching him. It's been, it's been a pleasure to watch and, you know, we speak about the price tag a lot because he was an absolute steal, wasn't he? But I think regardless if you paid 30 million for him, you couldn't complain. He's been he's been fantastic. And as you said, maybe the last couple of games, yeah. do you think fatigue a little bit? Or no, I, 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 yeah, ball? I don't know whether it's a matter of fatigue. I, I think he's... The lads have not played that well. Um, I think when you're playing in a in a team that's confident, you're confident, then um, your performance is a sky high. But uh, I just I just think the lads been been exceptional. I think uh, he brings something different to the team. He's not afraid to uh, go and express himself. Yeah. Whereas one or two players will be a bit shall I play the easy ball. He picks it up and he's direct. He wants to go at players. He wants to create things. He wants to shoot on goal. That's what we want, and uh, he certainly has been uh, outstanding since he arrived. He's been brilliant. Now, another player I want to talk about is back in the side as well, Luca Dean. Do you think we've missed him? We've missed his, his delivery, and um, obviously he's a, he is a left-back, so that, that suits us. We've been playing makeshift left-backs, haven't we? Yeah, it's a tough one on Luca because when he first arrived at the club and the season he had, I thought, I, I didn't think anybody could re replace Leighton Baines. I really didn't. Uh, then I watched uh, Luca's performances since his arrival at the club and I thought, this boy can play. He's, uh, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good talent, he puts great deliveries into the box, he scores great goals, free kicks, etc. 
But uh, I, I think he'll be disappointed in a way that the way this season's gone for him. He's not been at the top of his form, and it, he's made. It, I'm being on. I'm, I'm just trying to be be honest. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I'd, I'd love to think if the players did watch this, they'd be going, "Yeah, I agree with him." My form's not been nowhere near as good as it were previous season, but he's too good a player to not get back to what he's what he's got because he is a quality player. He's France's left back. He, he he'll play the international games as well now. And there's no doubt when Luca Dean is putting deliveries into the box, there's no better side. But I think this season, he'll, I'm sure he'll agree that his performances have not have been good as as usual. Yeah, like you said, I think, you know, a drop-off in four, but that quality remains, yeah. doesn't it? And hopefully, you know, having missed a game or two, it'll be revved up and whipping those balls in for, for the strikers. Ideally, if Sarah, I'd love him to uh, to have watched this and turn around to me and put two deliveries yeah. in. We win 2-0 and he, he looks at me <laughs> and points at me in the stand. I, I would love that because uh, we, we know what he can do. We know he can deliver balls into the box. Uh, we know he can uh, play great balls in behind defenders. So I want to see Luca Dean back to that. As I said, I didn't think nobody could replace Leighton Baines, uh, but he certainly did when he first arrived at the club. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Uh, on that left-hand side as well, Andy Gordon. Do you think he's yeah, going to be I, I, I want him, I want him to. I want him to do it. I, 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 I've Gone not, with the Gladys? Yeah. I, well, wouldn't that, that would be the perfect be, scenario, it'd be wouldn't it? Fantastic. I've... Uh, I managed to score in the Gladys Street and Edda as well. It were only in a cup game against Lincoln, but I don't care who it's against, what cup competition it is, scoring that Gladys Street end is, is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure Anthony's uh, dying to get on the score sheet, but I just think he, he, he's playing with so much confidence in himself that he can't wait for, uh, for 2 o'clock and the game to start. Absolutely. Well, let's hope it's a win. Ian Snowden, thank you so much, as ever, for joining me on Everton Live. It's always an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. Now, to finish the show, of course, this weekend does mark Remembrance Sunday. So here is our tribute to Everton and Everton Chile players who have lost their lives. Mm.